Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Uh, today is the first part in a series where we're going to use one of our swords to try and cut armor, steel armor. Now, there are a whole bunch of period representations of swords cutting through plate armor. Right, so I've got a picture here. Uh, this is just one example. Now, on the one hand, we might see these period illustrations as evidence that it was possible to cut straight through armor with a good sword. On the other hand, a lot of these illustrations are essentially pictures of heroic tales that make all kinds of claims about the strength and courage and, you know, prowess of the people in the tales that aren't really believable, right? Uh, it's possible that these are kind of medieval superhero uh, exaggerations. Uh, at the same time, you know, throughout the, the late 20th and uh, early 21st centuries here, uh, there's been this kind of story that, you know, some sword makers and some sword aficionados have kind of talked about where swords are seen as a kind of can opener uh, for cutting through armor. Uh, we're a little doubtful of those claims, but we decided we'd put some of them to the test. So today, I'm going to use an Arms and Armor longsword. It's a custom one that I made for me, uh, but it's standard uh, in all kinds of ways. Same steel, same blade, same everything. It just looks a little different. Uh, to cut a piece of 14 gauge mild steel with a rolled edge, to try and cut a piece of mild steel armor and to try and cut a piece of hardened steel armor that was made for us by our friend Josh Davis at Davis Reproductions. Thanks, Josh. Let's see how it goes. All right, here's the sword. It's got our standard Durer blade. It's made in the same way all of our swords are. It's just my slightly customized one. So if you don't see it on our catalog, it's just a custom. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try with this 14 gauge, safety third. I gave that a pretty good chop. All right, so you can see here where I cut. It cut in about a quarter of an inch uh, into this piece of steel. So I cut that pretty hard. And this is a sharp sword. The sword is harder than this steel. It did not slice straight through it. All right, that actually did cause some edge damage uh, to the sword. That's something I'll be able to fix, but it certainly nicked up there uh, where it clobbered that piece of steel. So now I'm going to try this piece of mild steel uh, that's a, a van brace uh, that's been roughed out and see what happens if you cut it on the flat instead of on the edge. All right, it did not cut through it, it did dent it. And on that side, the blade is fine having impacted uh, the edge. It didn't damage the blade at all. Finally, I've got this hard steel pauldron from Josh Davis. I'm gonna try and cut that on its ed uh, surface. All right, so, here is where I hit it uh, with the sword. Uh, it did not cut the armor. I uh, didn't penetrate it. It deformed it slightly on a decorative part. And it did mar the blade a little bit where that hit. Right there where it hit uh, the armor. This is kind of what I thought would happen, right? Is it possible to cut some parts of mild steel? Yeah, some. You're not gonna just slice through it, though. This sword is harder than period long swords were, 
which means it's probably stood up better to this. On the other hand, the edge geometry on this sword right, it has been sharpened. I was using it for tatami cutting, so it's quite sharp. So it's possible that a sword that wasn't quite this sharp uh, wouldn't receive that kind of same little edge damage uh, on there. On the other hand, that's exactly the kind of damage that we'd expect from combat that we see in historical swords that needs to be, uh, you know, sharpened out of swords that are in use. And so this is similar to my comments about chopping wood with a sword. Can you? Yes. Will your sword need maintenance? Yes. Did medieval long swords require maintenance when they were put through heavy use? Absolutely. It happened all the time. All right, thanks very much.